Atlantic City Dance Marathon. Canner and Ebb wanted to adapt the movie, They Shoot Horses, Don't They?, but they couldn't get the rights, uh, so they kept the marathon idea and constructed a new story around that. A stunt pilot played by Daniel McDonald came back from the dead to save a dancer, Karen Ziemba, from the evils of her promoter boyfriend who fixed the contests. Uh, the show also told the stories of characters played by Deborah Monk, Kristen Chenoweth, and my favorite, and more. <laughs> and more. This is the Kristen Chenoweth edition. Yeah, it is. Some critics uh, called it Candor and Ebb's best score, and some called it their worst. It's hard to be compared with everything you've previously done uh, each time you do a new show, but that was a lot for the men that created Cabaret in Chicago. Uh, when the show opened in 1997, the new shows it was competing with uh, were of a different ilk pop operas, and rock musicals. The New York Times noted that Canner and Ebb represented the survival of a form no one else was writing anymore. About the choreography, historian Ethan Morden wrote, the marathon setting obviously gave Susan Stroman many places to go, and she found them all. He also said, <laughs> perhaps it was another case of the public's impatience with well-made story musicals with strong emotional foundation. Those listening to the cast recording in the future will find it hard to understand why Steel Pier only lasted two months. There's a pun for you. Um, I like that it's actually Karen Ziemba, you know, working really hard in Steel Pier, and Ryan Darcy James working really hard in Titanic. <laughs> Um, in the book Colored Lights, Cater and Ebb talked about how they loved getting to use so many of their people in Steel Pier. Actors they worked with a great deal and had enormous personal feelings for, including Deborah Monk and Karen Ziemba. Cheetah is one of them too, they said. If we had a rep company, there would be a nucleus of people like that. Almost unconsciously, when we start a project, we start looking for roles for those people. Not only are they talented, but they're people that we love to have around. I thought someone was making a toast, so yeah, to that. <laughs> I mean, can you imagine if there was like a Canner and F rep company? You're so great. That would be the best thing ever. Uh, um, speaking of people they love to have around, I think is David Loud in the house tonight? Yeah. David Loud. Uh, David Loud conducted Steel Pure and worked with Canner and Ebb numerous times. And he told me one of my favorite Steel Pure stories, which is about how at the beginning of the show, the actors would uh, walk forward, um, correct me if I'm wrong, and drop sand through their fingers, like very dramatically, um, into the orchestra pit where it would land in all of the instruments and music. Um, so, he says when he opens his Steel Pure score to this day, he still has sand, and a bunch of the instruments had to get special covers, because um, that's art. That's what we, what we do for, for Steel Pure. Um, that's really... Kevin and I, whenever something really ridiculous happens in one of these shows, we're like, that's the fifth season of Smash. Oh, so yeah. we do that. <laughs> So one major trouble uh, with the story was deciding when the audience should learn that the heroic romantic lead was actually dead. And, and this was a tricky plot point. And the show in general, um, it's tricky. I mean, uh, next to normal, the whole thing. Um, and the show in general lent itself to Canner and Ebb's magnificent uh, mix of cynicism and hope. But ironically, it lost the Tonys it was nominated for to the Chicago Revival. Critics found plenty to like, uh, with Linda Weiner noting, someone finally made a show for Karen Zamba, and boy are we glad. And Susan Stroman's choreography has made Seal Pier Broadway's most satisfying new dance-driven musical since the golden years of Michael Bennett, Bob Fosse, and Jerome Robbins. That should really be a slide of like the three of those men like fighting each other, but I couldn't <laughs> uh, Candor and Ebb wrote, Steel Pier and the Ring were connected in that both of those shows were terribly emotional experiences for us. I remember having the highest hopes for them. They were our two biggest disappointments, not because they failed, but because of how much we loved them. They were more about people than any two shows we have ever done, and we loved everyone we were working with. I was sorry when we opened. I wish we could have just rehearsed. Both shows broke our hearts. You might think that anything that fails breaks your heart, but that's not true. Flora the Red Menace didn't break our hearts in the same way. If someone asked if we could go back and relive an experience on one of our shows, it would be Steel Pier or The Rink. I would want to go back and live through the whole thing just as it was, not go back and do anything different. Um, when we read through that in rehearsal, Kevin uh, cried. <laughs> in Jen's office uh, upstairs on the 10th floor, I was just like, oh my god, that's the most beautiful thing I've ever heard. And I was like, what a wiener, but also... <laughs> Get, I get more like my mother. I just cry at the, the drop of a hat, but I just think that's the most beautiful sentiment. But he was also—he was crying, and then he was like, "But also, I think Flora the Red Menace is special too." <laughs> I did it once at the duplex, like the, on the stage, that tiny stage. I was in Flora the Red Menace. It's a great—it's a great. This Steel Pier 
cast album is also another one you should get. It's amazing. It's a wonderful cast album. Variety wrote, Ziemba has the audience in the palm of her hand from the moment she walks on stage. Here to speak about and sing from Steel Pier, Karen Ziemba. <laughs> seen it. Um, I'm sure plenty of you have been to Atlantic City. And um, But what it was in its heyday, it was this um, actual pier that went out over the ocean, very far out. And along the way there was, you know, fairway games and oddities and all kinds of stuff. And people just walking hand in hand and walking over the ocean, being in this great, beautiful weather and, and breeze and getting out of the city, sweltering heat in the summer. Um, New York, Philly, and you would go there and you would go dancing and you would be in each other's arms and you would have foreplay in public because that's <laughs> the way you courted each other. And Steel Pier, not unlike that, was people holding each other for two hours a night and um, they got to part, you know, when they had to, you know, change costumes and things like that. But for the most part, everyone in that cast had to be in someone else's arms. And that's what I took away from that that was so, so extraordinary uh, compared to so many other things that I had done before because I was responsible for another person all night, whether they fell, whether they turned, whether they, you know, kicked over my head, but you had to be in contact and connected to them and looking at them. And so you came away with like so many lifelong friends and people that you felt so responsible for. And along with the fact that because it was one of Kinderneb's greatest scores, it stands the test of time. And these songs will be heard again, and hopefully this show will eventually be rethought, and um, maybe we'll see it again in another incarnation. Because I think it really deserves to be heard again and seen again. And uh, maybe, you know, maybe a little rewriting, you know, you never know. It, it, it could have another life. Um, uh, for those of you who don't know, this, uh, this first song I'm going to sing, um, my character, Rita Racine, who was a former vaudeville star, is getting ready to get become a contestant at the Steel Pier because there's no more work. We're all broke. It's the Depression. And um, I'm going to win the bucket of money because I'm a dancer. And I can dance with the best of them, and I can hold up somebody. And I'm and I'm waiting for my partner. I'm gonna, actually uh, he's going to meet me there, and I know that we are going to rock it. But what happens is he never shows up. But there's this strange guy that keeps following me around, saying, "Hey, hey, hey lady, you need a partner. You need a partner." And I said, "No, no, I'm, he, he'll be here. He'll be here." But he never shows up. So eventually, I end up dancing with this guy, and uh, before he leaves. He says to me, you know, maybe you'll win that bucket of money and might change your life. And I say, <clears throat> change my life. <gasps> you better want to change my life. After all these years of traveling all the way across the country, five shows a night, oh, I am heading home. Twelve Ocean Drive. Right by the shore. Not many rooms, I only count four. But for now, another marathon, another dead on my feet, another time clock to beat, bruise on my shin, desperate to win, just like it's always.
work out before and I couldn't forget if I tried. But I'm up to bat again, tossing my head again. Here I go again, willing to And I didn't know who the hell he was. Um, he came in, this very handsome guy, but I just remember when I read with him in the scenes, the way he looked at me and connected to me, I was like, that's the guy. He's the angel. He's the guy. That's the guy. So, of course, I cast him. <laughs> no. But they agreed with me, too. And uh, so he became the guy. And... Uh, when we started to dance in this first number, of course, he was all over my feet and couldn't dance. And they kept saying, oh, God, you're terrible. You're terrible. Come on, follow me. Do this. Step left, right. And he said, just give me that opportunity, and we are going to win this bucket of money. And this is what he's saying to me. Second chance. Whoever gets to get a second chance, whoever gets another turn at that, tell me that. One more try, whoever gets to get another try, whoever gets to sing the big reprise, tell me please. Once you're down, you're down, they say. Once you're out, you're out to stay. No one tells you you can get right up and you can start all over with a second chance. Whenever life has gone from bad to worse, you gotta run your movie in reverse. Soon that curse will disperse, but first you've got to get a second chance. Yeah, that's good. Once you're down, you're down, they say. Once you're Oh. 